Let Me Breathe brings you a weekly video newsletter, a one-stop shop for all the environment news that are happening close to home and around the world. Are you worried that your news intake doesn't have enough on the environment? Don't worry, we have you covered. Assam is flooding again and here is why the northeastern state of India needs your attention. 92% of the home of a one-horned rhinoceros in Kaziranga National Park stands submerged. At least 116 wild animals have been killed so far due to drowning or vehicle hits even as 143 animals have been rescued. As of 21st July, over 24 lakh people continue to remain affected by the floods according to the Assam State Disaster Management Authority. Crops covering over 1 lakh hectares in 24 districts have been damaged. The government has set up 276 relief camps and 192 relief distribution centers in the districts to help the flood-affected people. The United Nations has said that it is ready to support flood-hit Assam. In its shocking claims, the Central Pollution Control Board has informed the National Green Tribunal that over 1.6 lakh healthcare facilities in India are running without requisite permit under biomedical waste management rules. The direction came on a plea filed by a UP-based journalist, Shailesh Singh, seeking directions for closure of all hospitals, medical facilities and waste disposal plants which were not complying with the waste management rules. It has alleged that rag pickers were allowed unauthorized transportation of waste and they disposed it in an unscientific manner. The beginning of the southwest monsoon in the Himalayan state of Uttarakhand is usually marked with a state witnessing exceptional rainfall that often leads to landslides, cloudbursts and even floods. This year was no different. Cloudbursts and heavy rains wreaked havoc in two villages in Uttarakhand, leaving 12 dead and many injured as of 23rd July. The heavy rainfall followed by the cloudburst has also led to extensive damage to houses and other public properties in the two villages. Now some good news. According to the Diet for Better Future report, India is among the five nations with the lowest G20 carbon footprint. What does this mean for us? Representing 20 of the largest economies in the world, the consumption habits of G20 states are among the most important in affecting the planet and its resources. Though they make up only 10% of the world's countries, they produce almost three quarters of the total carbon emissions from the entire global food system. According to the recent Diet for a Better Future report, among the world top economies, only the per capita of carbon footprints in India and Indonesia are low enough to ensure the Paris Climate Agreement's target of capping global warming at 1.5 degrees Celsius is met. Apple is planning to remove carbon emissions from its entire business, including its products and sprawling supply chain. The transition will take over the next decade to wean off the usage of existing carbon in the production line. Apple said it aims to achieve 75% of its goal by reducing emissions. The remaining 25% is set to be coming from carbon removal or offset projects such as planting trees and restoring habitats. The sighting of Doladar ranges from Jalandhar, Everest peaks from Sitamarhi or in general breathing fresh air due to improvements in AQI, has brought much respite since the coronavirus pandemic and the nationwide lockdown. The deal breaker is going to be how can we accept this to change in a post-corona world. Read this piece by Yash Khandelwal on Let Me Be Dotted. In international waters this week, US President Donald Trump made some noise by weakening the environmental law to speed up permits for pipelines and other infrastructure. He finalized a rollback to the country's National Environmental Policy Act by speeding up approval for federal projects like pipelines, highways and power plants. The National Environment Policy Act was signed into law by President Richard Nixon 50 years ago and requires federal agencies to consider the environmental consequences of infrastructure projects 
before they are approved. The move is the latest effort from the Trump administration to roll back a slew of environmental regulations in place to combat accelerating climate change and protect natural habitats from drilling and development. Further the goal of livable cities, young leaders for active citizenship in partnership with Let Me Breathe and WRI India have joined hands with the Bangalore Moving Campaign to help reduce vehicular emissions in Bangalore. The immediate action plan for the year is to focus on efficient public transportation including bus lanes and designing solutions to increase uptake of public transportation among residents. Are you an eco-warrior? Have you spotted an environment story in your locality that the world missed? Tell us about it and get a chance to feature in the newsletter next week.